the, the neighbor who owned this had cows on it and they were out so my husband helped running the cows back in the barn and the fellow asked if we wanted to buy the farm and we were looking for a farm so it was right next door to my husband's father and uh, parents. Grapes had been grown in that spot for almost over a hundred years. All new posts, all new vines, but that spot, grapes have been grown in that same spot. And I know when my grandmother talked about her daughter moving out to the country, she talked about sending her out to Indian country. This was very isolated. It took, you know, an hour and a half to get into grandma's house even as a child. So mom came from that environment where she worked at Halley's, where she was a city girl, beautiful, tall, slender, um, pretty, and um, uh, went to Jane Addams High School and came out to a place with no electricity, no running water, no telephone, and no access to the world because she fell in love with my dad at a skating rink at Madison on the Lake. Bought the farm, no house on it. During the war, you couldn't buy any house lumber. So you could buy lumber to build a barn. So we ended up saying we we're gonna need a chicken coop. So we built a 15 by 30 building and moved in before the chickens. We lived there four years, built a big house. Then we put the chickens in the chicken coop. So we didn't really say we weren't gonna use it. Well, living in the chicken coop, we had the washing machine on the little porch. You had to pull it into the kitchen and uh, I washed clothes there. And one time Tony opened up the valve, let all the water out of the washing machine down to the kitchen floor, which seeped down into the lower part, which was the under, under frame. And I guess eventually all that water dried up. We had an old tractor that we had, uh, my husband made a box and put the box on top of the gas tank, put Donnie in it, tied her in it, Tony in my arms, my husband behind plowing in the vineyard, in and out of the vines. Then when they grew up, they lived in the vineyard with us. I mean, they learned how the colors and the birds and the trees and and anything to keep them out there. Mom believed that, you know, family first, always. And Dad built a great big swing out in the yard for us out of a couple of telephone poles. And you felt like you were flying through the sky and, you know, there was a big tree up in the corner. And Mom, we'd, we'd do picnics under the under the, uh, the elm trees that were there. Um, she was a working mom at home and she canned. I remember going back to the pond, swimming with our friends, Mom lugging a bushel of peaches and a basket of pears back to the pond, peeling the pears and peeling the peaches to can 150 quarts of each. But she peeled and cleaned them back at the pond so our friends could swim. You know, she was very integrally involved with what we did. The kids were so involved in the vineyard, it was just a natural thing to be together. And in order to be together, my neighbor used to be surprised how I'd bring the kids out in the vineyard. And uh, we made games out of it. It was a uh, I love the land. I never even knew potatoes grew in the ground. I mean, I came out here from Halley's and it was it was true love that I did everything together. Uh, Tony was in service and they started the building, always there. And uh, he came home October fourth, yes, and he ended up uh, starting grinding the grapes and it was just a lower cellar, building nothing on top yet built. And uh, then we sold our first bottle of wine that spring, March 27th of 1972. And uh, our friends were waiting and waiting for the wine. But my son wouldn't let it go until it was absolutely ready. You know, they sacrificed everything at quite an older age. At 55 years old, they took everything that they owned and put it into this new venture uh, called uh, Chalet Debonet Vineyards at the time. And uh, uh, all that they could gather from the bank uh, was put into the winery. And then, of course, 
uh, we were really pioneers. Uh, I remember their friends telling them how crazy they were to invest all this money into something that uh, no one had ever done in this area since Prohib Prohibition. And um, But once they had made that decision, there was no looking back. And I remember my dad said, we can either live in it or put cattle in it or do something with the winery if it's not successful. I know my mother was very, very involved. My father continued with the farm and uh, was, uh, was doing the crops and raising the crops. My mother immediately started to come into the, to the winery and love the business aspect of it. I think that she always desired for that. And I remember one time when I was young that, that she wanted to start a dude ranch here. She always wanted to have a business. If my mom would have been born 40 years after she had been, she would be the executive vice president of some major corporation. She was just born a little bit early. Um, she's, she's intelligent, she's smart, she's savvy, all of those things. I remember when she did the books for the winers for years, and I remember when Tony um, decided he wanted to computerize. Instead of handwritten accounts, we needed a computer. She hadn't typed since she was 15 or 16 years old in high school. And she learned to type and then to adopt this very complex accounting system on the computer and continue to run the books for years. Well, I think that that was our foundation. We had this, uh, this uh, group of four people that basically would do anything, uh, but we had the right blend of the personalities uh, for the entertainment side. Uh, we had uh, you know, the business side of it, so we really kind of covered quite a few bases, and, and we all worked as hard as two people and, and for the first five years or longer we didn't even take any money out of the business we uh, you know, had no paycheck we had no paycheck and uh, my mother always used the philosophy that uh, uh, the best way to make money is not spend any doing whatever it was required whether it was to clean out the sewer system or do an interview or do whatever and my mother washed bottles to you know, clean the traps of the sink to running, you know, a, a meeting uh, with uh, business people and, and talking about the winery and doing tours. She used to love to do tours. And, of course, she was a great sales lady. She would always talk. If you wanted a bottle of wine, she'd ask you, are you sure you only want one? And if you went to two, you know, you could save a lot if you bought a case. And uh, she used to sell hundreds of cases from two-bottle sales. I had polio. I was on crutches the first grade. And as I progressed, it was better and better as it went along. And it came back again when I was 70. When I was young, I was always behind. And I'd look at my mother and say, just do it, just do it, just do it. Everything I said, I'd complain a little bit. And she said, oh, just do it. So all my life, I just figured I got just do it. Whatever it was, I did it. She had, I had a double hip replacement um, several years ago, right after mom's had, had her single hip replacement, and it slowed me up a bunch. But because of the, uh, the polio that she had, it made me appreciate the fact that you didn't always have to be speedy to do something, that God sometimes sent you messages that needed to slow you down. And even when we were talking about, I'm sitting in her chair right now, even the fact that this chair goes up and down, she's reminding me that one of these days I'm going to be in a situation where I'm going to need to maintain my intellect, maintain my positive attitude toward life, and deal with whatever comes in front of you. When she says, just do it, she said it way before Nike, just do it.